Hello everyone, this is Hayropmania. Welcome back to my playthrough of Dragon Quest VII, Fragments of the Forgotten Past for the 3DS. Previously, the party resolved things here, in the present day Faraday. Mechanical thank yous. Elliot is Elliot's expressing something that seems a lot like gratitude, and maybe automata have hearts after all. X marks the spot, again. The party visit Ambrose at his house and receive a tablet fragment from his granddaughter. Apparently, she dug it up near the old man's secret hiding place. With their new treasure in hand, our heroes are all set to head for a brand new island. Almost. We still have yet to revisit the Automaton Stronghold. I never feel quite at ease in this town. It must be the way it's built. It's not exactly very welcoming. Everyone, everyone here is talking about machines just like the old days. I guess some things don't change. What are we doing here, Davalos? Are we taking another look at those cleaning machines? No, my friend. We're just about to leave. With that ban on disturbing alien place, there shouldn't be any more trouble in Faraday. And that means it's time we headed to, we headed to our next destination. Ellie's nice, isn't she? I hope everyone leaves her alone from now on. I hope King Faraday and his scholars remember Ellie as they get on with their research. If they base their designs on her kindness and dedication, I'm sure they'll come up with something. I'm sure they'll come up with something that will help everyone in the kingdom. Now we'll head east to the Automaton Stronghold, or whatever remains of it. Hello again, Automaton Stronghold. With all the scientific stuff down there, you could make as many automatons as you liked, if you knew what you were doing. The automaton stronghold is still here, but it, but it doesn't look as if anyone's actually using it. Ooh, I remember this place. I think I see someone down there, actually. Hello there. Hello, dear. If you'd like your fortune telling, I'm your girl. Well, fancy seeing what the future holds? Sure. Marvelous. Here we go then. Umra, Moog, Babu. Here it is, almost there. Oh, well, I must say, this is rather rum. I can't see a belly thing. Your foot. Your future's as blank as the blankest slate in the National Museum of Frightfully Blank Slates. Or perhaps my second sight's fading along with my eyesight. Never get old, dear. Dashed awful business. What does she mean? She couldn't see anything. We're right in front of her. So that's how it is, eh? Well, if there's no path laid out for us, we'll just have to forge our own. She couldn't see anything. What kind of a fortune teller is she? Crikey! Who'd have thought all these technological gizmos would still be in working order after all these years? <coughs> I don't like this place. It smells all irony. Oh, the irony. Well, this place hasn't changed much. It looks like this machinery was built to last. This lift still works. Let's see if there's anything to find. How about up this lift? A couple of chests. Let me prepare, just in case.
This one contains a seal of strength. That is good to get. However, this one is actually a candy box. In the same place as before. Hello, candy box. Time for the old sap and slap. Take that, candy box. Now back downstairs. Then we'll check to the south. Down to level B2. That chest is empty. This one contains a mini medal. Beautiful. Mini medal number 11. Now we'll take the middle lift. Then to the boss room. Anything here? I'll check the pot in a moment. First I'll open the chest for a set of iron claws. A new single target weapon for Ruff. We'll get rid of his stone fangs. All right, then we'll pop this face. Oh no, the pot is actually an unexpected. Wonderful unexpected. Don't do that. Almost everyone's put to sleep except Maribel. They're awake again. You jerk. Nice job, Ruff. Goodbye, unexpected. Lovely. That's it in here, so let's evac out.
Now I think we'll check across that bridge to the east. The one that was broken in the past. There's come there's some kind of shrine by that pond. First I'll check around the area. See if there's anything to find. I don't think there is. Alright, let's check this shrine. The Pool of Piety. There's something holy about this place. I can feel it in the air. A power far beyond human comprehension. Not that you'd have noticed, Davalos. You're not nearly as sensitive to spiritual matters as I am. Really? It must get a bit chilly, living in the middle of a lake. No blurbs about this place. The door seems to be sealed with a mysterious power. What's up, kitty? Meow. Meow to you, too. Oh, hello there. Tis an eternity I have waited. The light which once illumined these lands hath long since been extinguished, and still I wait. But I have faith that all is not in vain. Nay, one day my duty shall be one day my duty shall be fulfilled. I have faith that the ruins in which the Almighty sleeps shall one day be discovered. I, when the sacred stone spoken of in legend is brought here, I shall know that it is the time. So the Almighty's asleep. But it's the middle of the day. Though there are those who seek to destroy the Almighty, know that his power and grace are eternal. He has bequeathed to his chosen people the ultimate miracle, the ability to one day reawaken him. We, the Holy Order of the Almighty, do solemnly vow to guard the secret of his revival for all eternity. We patiently await the day when the bearer of the sacred stone shall appear, and the sun shall rise on a new era. For all eternity? Wow, I wonder how long that soldier has been hanging around here for. Very mysterious. That will figure in much, much later. Now. There's another person to recruit for the Haven. So let's return there and see the last clue. Hello again, Haven. Our last recruit was this person. I'd love to give you a nice bouquet, but it'll be a while before my flowers come into bloom, I'm afraid. I do have a little seedling of information to give you instead, though. I passed through a spa town recently, and I heard about a cook who hates the heat. He might be in need of your help as well, though I'm not sure you'll be able to meet him if you head there just yet. We can meet him now. So we shall zoom to Emberdale. Now we want to head to the northeast building, the bar, and talk to this cook, Garhar. 
It ain't half hot here. I'm melting, I swear. If only I could find a cool spot with a nice fresh breeze. Tell him about Carrie's community building initiative. Certainly. Garhar. Now that sounds like a place I could live. It sounds a darn sight cooler than this hot spot anyway. The name's Goyldon. It would be super cool to see you again once I reach my new home. I'll give you something to say thanks. All right. Now we'll zoom back to... The Haven. Hello again, Haven. And Goyldon is in here, in the pub. Garhar, it's you. The one who... The ones who told me about this place. Well, I couldn't take the heat, so I got out of the kitchen, and it's the best thing I ever did. This breeze is a lifesaver. Here, let me give you a little something to say thank you. Davalos receives the Demon's Dome Tablet. I picked up the odd tasty tidbit of information on my travels, you know. For example, on my way here, I came across a young man who was desperate to find a place where he could sing at the top of his lungs. Last I heard, he was on his way to some town full of machines or something. Maybe Frobisher or Faraday. We just received the Demon's Tome tablet from Goyldon. Hobby Volunteering, Title Dabbler in Darkness, Personality Devilish. Now then. We'll head back to Pilchard Bay to rest. And then... It'll be off to the Shrine of Mysteries... ...to complete another tablet. Time to rest. Then we'll zoom to the Shrine of Mysteries. Now then, pal, I believe we have a green fragment. For the lower left. It goes in the lower left corner. We also have a couple of red fragments. Those go in the lower right pedestal. This one goes top center. This one goes in the lower right. Another pedestal is complete. And it whisks us off to the sixth region. There's a really bad atmosphere around here. I could smell something funny, like some kind of perfume. Watch out, Davalos. You don't know what might be lurking in this darkness. Well, I see a zombie. As for the fragments we slotted...
and the green tablet. Alrighty. Now we'll head on to the town. Green Thumb Gardens. What an odd town. It's deathly quiet. It's almost as if no one lives here at all. Erm, um, where exactly is everyone? You don't think some awful monster swooped down from the sky and gobbled up all the townspeople, do you? Keep your ears open, Davalos, and watch my back. Huh? There's nobody here. Hello? Is anyone home? A suspicious silence. Our heroes find themselves in a new town. But it's one whose eerie quiet seems rather familiar. A warm welcome to Green Thumb Gardens. You all make yourselves at home now. So, let's check around. Uh-oh. It's a stone statue. Although it looks an awful lot like a real human who's been turned to stone. Remember Regenstein? That place was full of stone statues in all sorts of weird poses, too. Indeed. Familiar figurines. Davalos and company find several statues dotted around town. They look a lot like humans who've been turned to stone. Could they be victims of the same grey rain that fell on Regenstein? Could the culprit be here? Anything down this well? No? Anything back here? It's a little boy who's been turned to stone. It seems he was trying to dash into the shop when it happened. It's a shopkeeper who's been turned to stone. Nothing in there. It's a woman who's been turned to stone. It looks like she was running at full pelt when it happened. Nothing of interest. What an odd town. It's deathly quiet. It's almost as if no one lives here at all. Hmm, a pub. It's a young man who's been turned to stone. He looks completely out of breath. He must have run here from somewhere. It's a woman who's been turned to stone. The pub. It's a bartender who's been turned to stone. He's still holding a glass in his hand. It's a dancer who's been turned to stone. She looks very similar to the dancer who's standing next to her. They're probably sisters. It's a dancer who's been turned to stone. It seems she was feeling quite annoyed at the moment it happened. It's a soldier who's been turned to stone with a big smile on his face. He was holding hands with the dancing girl when it happened. For shame, soldier. VN. It's a woman who's been turned to stone. It's a young woman who's been turned to stone. 
It seems she was trying to run into the inn when it happened. An adventure log on the table. In case you need to save. It's a priest who's been turned to stone. It's a nun who's been turned to stone. It seems it happened just as she was getting changed. Anything in this wardrobe? Some wayfarer's clothes. Not something we especially need. An item shop. Hello. It's a shopkeeper who's been turned to stone. Nothing in that wardrobe. There's a diary on the table. Read it. Well, sure. Davalos reads the diary. All he cares about is chasing his dreams. He never so much as looks at little old me. But I just know he knows I'm there. He's trying to drive me away, but he can't fight the inevitable. The diary continues in the same vein for several pages, with the handwriting growing more and more feverish until it deteriorates into an illegible scrawl. Sounds like someone is obsessed. How about the side room? Got a chest here. Well, well. Another mini medal. We are up to 12. No books of interest. Not even accounting ledgers. It's a woman who's been turned to stone. It seems she was cooking something just before it happened. A long time's passed since then, however, and the contents of her cooking pot are so moldy it's impossible to tell what they are. So it has been a while, but not too long, I hope. It's a young woman who's been turned to stone. The wardrobe contains a pair of bunny ears. I already have some, so we don't need these. It's an old man who's been turned to stone. He looks out of breath. He must have run all the way here from somewhere. It's a cat that's been turned to stone. It seems to have happened just as it was in the middle of an enormous yawn. Davalos picks up a weighty tome entitled 1001 Things You Didn't Know About Automata and leaves through the pages. Among the diagrams and descriptions, one section in particular catches Davalos's eye. Ever wished there was always ever wished there was always someone waiting for you when you got home? Well now there can be, introducing the bachelor's best friend, the mechanical maid. Three gold. Not the best.
How about this well? Nope. The door is firmly locked. These statues are in much better condition than the ones we saw in Regenstein. It can't have been long since the Grey Rain fell here. Maybe the monster who caused it is still around. That Great Rain must have fallen here, too. We'd better change everyone back as quick as we can. We've seen what happens if you leave it too late. We know these statues are people that have been turned to stone. Now we've just got to find a way of changing them back. Well, we'll see. Oh ho, who is that up there? If you're fixing to buy herbs, go right ahead and ask the gardener. Well, well. It's a young man, frozen in place, trying to protect a woman. How come these two statues are the only ones outside? He tried his best to protect her from the rain, but it didn't do any good. Anyone in here? Hello. It's a man who's been turned to stone. He seems to have been dashing into his house in a panic at the moment it happened. There's something sticking out from between two books. A cursory glance is enough to tell you that it's a half-written love letter penned by Herbie. We find a piece of hardwood headwear. Perhaps we can use that. There you go, Davalos. Some wooden headwear. It's an old man who's been turned to stone. Well, let's see if we can get up to that pink monster. It's a shopkeeper who's been turned to stone. It's a man who's been turned to stone. Something about him suggests that he's a traveling merchant. Nothing there. Nothing there. Davlos picks up a book entitled Weird and Wonderful Plants of the World and begins to read it. It appears to be an encyclopedia of unusual plants of various shapes and sizes. There's even a rather alarming image of a giant vine demolishing an entire town. It's an older gentleman who's been turned to stone. It's a maid who's been turned to stone. A couple of barrels. Twenty-five gold. It's a farmer who's been turned to stone. It's a young man who's been turned to stone. He's pressed up against the window with a pained expression on his face. A set of garish garb.
It is better. I think you'll get it, Davalos. Since you're in the lead. Anything in here? But the chest is locked tight. We'll need some kind of key. Nothing there. Ah, uh, here we are. Suck, slurp, slobber. Hmm, slurping sweet, sweet nectar while staring at stupid stone humans is just the best. Hmm, what the? Slurp, humans, slobber. I thought you'd all been turned to stone. Well, I'm not complaining. Human blood isn't as sweet as nectar, but it's still not bad. And I've never turned down a free lunch yet. Slobber. Time to fight the Rainiac. Are you responsible for this gray rain? Sap him, Maribel. Cool breath, huh? That hurts a bit. Fortunately, the hero has mid-heal. And Maribel also has heal. Oh, you know mid heal, do you? Enough with the cool breath. Aha, uh -huh, he's out of MP. Goodbye, Rainiac. That'll teach you to rain on people's parades. Slurp. I... I got sloppy. Still, just because you beat me, it doesn't mean the human's curse is going to be lifted. The people of this town are going to be lumps of stone forever, and there's nothing you can do about it. Slobber. Take that, Rainiac. Now that we've got rid of that slobbering horror, let's get rid of the curse, too. Let's scatter the angels' tears from the highest point in town, just like we did in Regenstein. That should turn everyone back to normal again. So even if we do turn everyone back to normal again, they won't remember anything. 
Well, we'll see. Our heroes have managed to defeat the monster on the rooftop. Unfortunately, this doesn't seem to have had any effect on the people who have been turned to stone down below. What will they have to do to bring them back? The Old Angel's Tears. A fiend surveys the scene. A lone monster is surveying the town from the roof of its tallest building. Is he the reason everyone's turned to stone? And that was, how can the curse be lifted? Under recent developments. The town stretches out beneath you. If you were to release the angel's tears from up here, they'd probably float down and cover the whole area. Do you want to give it a try? Absolutely. Although I may change my mind eventually. Davalos holds the bottle of angel's tears aloft. The light of day is shining. Look, the clouds have all gone. The curse must have been lifted, too. Is everyone back to normal now, then? Let's go and see. The Twinkling of Tears Davalos and the gang try sprinkling some angel's tears from the highest point in town, just like they did back in Regenstein. The dainty drops flutter gently down onto the stone statues below, and make them human again. Maybe some of them will know a thing or two about what happened here. Hello there. Dang, I sure do feel dizzy. What just happened? Wait, I remember. I was a spying on Caraway through the window, and I done seen that low-down dirty dog fixin' to hit on my lavender. Eh, and what's this now? <laughs> He's on top of her. He's got darned land right there on top of my fiancé. Has he done gone lost his mind? Why in the name of creation would he do something like that to my dear sweet innocent Lavender? Oh boy. My Lavender? Erg. I can't stand men who treat women like their personal property. A lady can lie under whoever she pleases. Look, Davalos, we did it. We lifted the curse. Do you mean that the way you said it, Maribel? Hello, maid. Well, howdy there, strangers. Are y'all here sheltering from the rain, too? I'm um, sure. Hee <laughs> hee. Yep, that's what I thought. Say, I do believe I've yet to introduce myself. Name's Cayenne. Uh, it's a real pleasure to meet y'all. If y'all have any questions about this here big old house, you, all, you go on ahead and ask. Very well, Cayenne. As soon as that gray rain done started a fallin', everybody done skedaddled back on home. I don't blame them. But they weren't quite quick enough. Say, Mayor Burdock, looks like the weather done took a turn for the better. Well, now ain't that dandy. Truth be told, I wasn't so sure that their gray rain was ever gonna stop. And even supposing it had, might have been we still all would have wound up turned to stone. Guess we got lucky. Can't say as I quite believe it, though. Can a little rain truly turn folks into big old lumps of rock like that? Well, you don't see that purple cloud with your own two eyes. Did it look friendly to you? Well, uh, no, I guess. Anyhow, seems the trouble's past now. I better go check on folks.
I just wish this body of mine wasn't so dang stiff. I can't rightly tell what's come over me all of a sudden. You got turned to stone, sir. That's why. It was the same in Regenstein. Felix didn't remember being turned to stone, either. It's amazing. They've really got no idea they were turned to stone. Howdy there. Now listen, I may be mayor of this here town, but I ain't about to get all bent out of shape if visitors use my humble abode to take shelter from the rain. I just ain't the kind. Well, thanks, Mayor. Besides, I got more important matters to be getting all steamed up about. I surely hope my dear old herb garden didn't come to no harm. It'd be more than I could countenance if that gray rain done ruined my precious crops. He's worried about his herb garden. There's nothing to fear on that front. The gray rain doesn't seem to affect plants. Kor, he really doesn't know that he used to be a statue. We didn't come here to take shelter from the rain. It was the rooftop we wanted. Still, there's no point correcting him now. He wouldn't believe the truth even if we told him. That rotten rain. As suspected, it was the same gray rain as before that turned everyone to stone. Indeed, the effects of this transformation are still being felt by many, who seem to be a little bit stiff. Now let's check outside. Somebody, please! Some folks... Some folks done got caught in the rain too long out there in the herb garden. Looks like one of them done got turned to stone. Uh-oh. That does not sound good. Did you hear that, Davalos? Someone's in trouble in the herb garden. Let's go and help them. What the... Not again? I thought we'd be able to cure everyone this time. Is everyone back to normal now, then? Let's go and see. But we shall see next time. Still rigid from the rain? Davalos and friends leave the mayor's house and immediately hear a panicked scream. It seems that there's a man in the herb garden whose body has gone all stiff, almost as if he had been turned to stone. Why didn't the angel's tears work on him like they did for everyone else? Well, we'll find out, but we'll do so next time. For now, let's go to the inn and rest, and then save. All us folks here in town done breathed a big, done breathed a big old sigh of relief and headed on back outside when we heard the rain done stop to fallin'. Sure is funny though. Seems ain't none of us without some kind of trouble moving or walking since. I don't know how long these people were turned to stone for, but it must have been quite a while. They're still feeling the effects. Hey there, priest. I said, hey there, priest. It has been six months now since I began traveling around, spreading the good word of the Almighty. But enough about me. Oh, you don't offer confessional services. Fortunately, there is this adventure log. Next time we'll see what's happened here in Green Thumb Gardens. This is Hey Rotlinia. I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time.